Welcome to one of the most common sights on our roads. Hi guys, Eric here and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be having a look at this 2016 BMW 320i. It is quite the impressive package. It has the badge, it has the oomph and it has the premium build quality. It isn't perfect though, allow me to explain. Would you like to be mentioned in my next video? All you have to do is to make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and tell me what car this wheel design belongs to using the comment section below. Be sure to identify both the make and model. Let's see who knows most about cars. The 3 Series is a D-segment sedan produced by German manufacturer BMW. The first generation, codenamed the E21, was released all the way back in 1975. It was available only as a two-door sedan. The second generation, called the E30, was introduced in 1982. This model became available as a four-door sedan, two-door coupe, two-door convertible and an estate. It was also the first 3 Series to receive diesel power. Conversely, the E30 was also the first 3 Series to get a hot M3 model. The third generation, called the E36 and known as the Dolphin Shape, began production in 1990. This model was quite a bit bigger than the E30 it replaced and became more complicated and luxurious. The rear suspension received a multi-link setup which made a big difference in ride quality. The E46 was the fourth generation of the 3 Series. This was the first model to receive convenient features like satellite navigation and rain sensing wipers. The E46 M3 became available with a 6-speed manual or a 6-speed automated manual transmission, which I find quite interesting. The fifth generation, dubbed the E90, was unveiled to the public in 2004. This was the first 3 Series to be offered with a turbo petrol engine. The E90 remained in production all the way until 2013, a staggering 9-year run. This is the F30, the sixth iteration of the 3 Series sedan. This model is powered by a 2-litre turbocharged petrol engine that develops a healthy 135 kilowatt and 270 newton meters of torque. This is enough to propel the 320i from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.3 seconds, yet returns a claimed combined fuel consumption figure of only 6.3 litres per 100 kilometers. That is a very impressive achievement. When it comes to the F30's looks, I like the design. It is much sleeker and feminine than the imposing E90 that came before it. The front in particular looks modern and aerodynamic. The light clusters are small and the BMW kidney grille is big. In profile, it looks quite angular, very unlike the C-Class of the same time. The 16-inch wheels are a bit too small in my opinion though and robs the 320 of a dynamic look. The rear helps to make up for it though with aggressively shaped light clusters and twin exhaust outlets. It works very well together as a whole, but it lacks the visual drama of the Mercedes C-Class and Lexus IS. What is the interior like? Step inside the BMW 3 Series and you're greeted with a very well made, if rather uninspired interior. BMW is known to play it safe when it comes to interior designs and it is absolutely no different in here. It must be said though, you can immediately tell that this is a BMW. The designers definitely understands the importance of brand identity. Build quality is fantastic. Everything feels solidly put together. Fit and finish is excellent as well. The panel gaps are consistently small throughout the cabin. Use of materials is great too. You get soft touch plastics on top of the dash, on top of the doors and even on the lower parts of the cabin which is quite impressive. There are two exceptions though. This silver plastic trim doesn't really fit in a car of this ilk and the leather isn't exactly the softest out there. Nappa leather it certainly is not. Let's take a closer look though starting with the door panel. Well, it is a very simplistic design, devoid of many swoops, curves or angles. It is a very well made panel though. The door handle is made out of solid metal, you get this attractive leather trim piece 
and a well-padded leather raptor armrest. The door pockets are of a good size as well. There are two caveats though. This material found at the back of the door's grab handle is deteriorating prematurely, which is a bit disappointing. And the window switches, while they feel premium to use, is made out of a cheaper piece of plastic and they look a bit too basic for a car of this ilk. The doors do carry an amazing amount of weight to them though and they close with a very satisfying German thud. Turning to the steering wheel, it is identical to those you find in a lot of other BMW models. Its rim is rather small in diameter, but it's nice and chunky, and you get the sporty three-spoke design. You also get this attractive painted silver trim, the buttons feel premium to the touch, and there is a lot of adjustments in the steering column. The stalk centers automatically, which does take some getting used to, but they are easy to understand and they feel nice to the touch. The dials follow the same theme as the rest of the cabin by being very simplistic in its design, but attractive and well made. The white digits might look a bit too small, but because they are placed on a black background, they are surprisingly easy to read. You also get an analog fuel and water temperature gauge as well. All dials are even framed in this beautiful brushed aluminium trim. It looks great. At the bottom center of the instrument cluster, you will find a relatively small drive's information display. It is full color and it communicates a comprehensive trip computer along with audio information, outside temperature, current time and warning messages. It is controlled using this button at the end of the left hand stalk, which is quite interesting. It works rather well, but digital dials this most certainly is not. Now for the infotainment system. Well, this is BMW's standard small screen, not the widescreen you get in some other models, and it isn't a touchscreen. Instead, you operate it by using this rotary dial with some shortcut buttons. That being said, this is an excellent infotainment system. Its menu structure is intuitive, it is really quick to load different menus, and the screen is placed right in the driver's eye line. I definitely prefer this setup to a touchscreen. It comes really well equipped too. USB input, auxiliary port, Bluetooth audio and a CD player all come as standard. And the standard fit sound system packs a surprisingly good punch to it as well. It's quite impressive. The climate controls in the 3 Series is very easy to understand. It is a proper dual zone setup. Two dials control the temperature, the buttons cycle through the mini air placement modes and there's a rocker switch for the fan speed. It is very simple to use and you don't really have to take your eyes off the road for too long to operate it. I must say though, I prefer a couple of dials instead as you can memorize where they are so you don't have to take your eyes off the road at all. When it comes to the seats, I am a little at odds with them to be honest. They look a bit too plain and the leather isn't exactly the most plush out there. They are very firm as well. They do provide excellent lower back support and it has good side bolstering. Let me put it to you this way, these seats are perfect for either very young people or old people with osteoporosis. The driver's seat is adjustable for height though, which makes finding a comfortable driving position just that much easier. With the design out of the way, let's discuss the 3 Series practicality, starting with its storage solutions. Well, it performs rather well. The well-dampened glove box is of a good size. You get a small tray area underneath the climate controls, two coverable wide and deep cup holders, a tray area underneath the center armrest, and big door pockets. You don't get any coin compartments though, nor do you get a sunglasses holder. That is no deal breaker of course, but it's not exactly class leading either. Get in the back and things are impressive, especially when you consider the space back here. Knee room is very good, fit room is adequate and there's enough headroom for an average size male adult. The seats are on the firm side but they're comfortable and they provide excellent under thigh support. Storage wise you get relatively big door pockets and two cup holders placed within the drop down armrest. You don't get any rear seat pockets though, which I think is quite interesting. You do have your own air vents though, which is essential for a hot climate. The windows are very big as well, so children will get an excellent view out. This is a good family car. 
The boot is a fantastic size of 480 litres. You also get four tethering hooks and a grocery hook. This is where the good points end though, because you don't get a spare wheel. Instead, you get these auxiliary storage compartments. Now, the BMW runs on run flat tyres, so that kind of makes sense. What is unforgivable though, in my opinion, is that the rear bench can't fold down. That is a cost option. Now, this doesn't really affect everyday practicality for some grocery runs, but at this price point, it has to be standard. It's quite disappointing. The boot lip isn't that high though, so you know, that's something. With the exception of some small niggles, the 3 Series really impresses me with a well-built cabin and a lot of space for rear occupants. What is the driving experience like though? Starting with driving around town, the 3 Series performs very well. The steering is very light, there is no clutch, and the turning circle is nice and tight. The engine is also very strong and the gearbox is quick to respond, so lane weaving during rush hour traffic is definitely possible. As standard, you don't get a reversing camera, but you do get rear park distance control. Combine that with very good all-round visibility and the 3 Series is much easier to park than you might think. It is worth mentioning though that the suspension is definitely on the firmer side. Not uncomfortable, just not as comfortable as some of its rivals. Out on the twisties and the BMW performs really well. The steering is communicative, body roll is very well kept in check and the gearbox is quick to respond. This is a fun car to drive on more demanding roads and not a lot of cars can say that. Out on the open road and the BMW feels right at home. The suspension is settled, the seats are comfortable and the engine is more than strong enough to overtake swiftly should the opportunity arise. Noise insulation isn't that bad either. The engine ticks over at a very low 1 and 3 quarter thousand RPM at our national speed limit and road noise and tyre roar is relatively well muted. I'm quite impressed with this 3 Series to be honest. It performs well whether you're pottering around town, driving on more demanding roads or just cruising on the highway. It's really quite impressive. Reliability wise, the F33 series performs very well. Common problems seem to be premature wear on brake pads and discs and leaking EGR coolers. On the What Car Reliability Survey, the 3 Series placed 5th out of 18 cars, an excellent showing. Make sure to buy one with a full service history though. For more tips, click here for my full used car buying guide. When it comes to its rivals, you're quite spoiled for choice in this D-segment sedan class. There is the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, which has more dramatic styling than the 3 Series, both inside and out, but it doesn't feel quite as solid as the BMW. Then there is the Audi A4. It has a fantastic Estronic gearbox and a big boot, but it isn't as engaging to drive as the F30. Something out of left field is the Infiniti Q50. It is much better equipped than the 3 Series and way cheaper second hand but it isn't as much fun to drive, nor is it as well built. Test drive all of them though, they are all great cars. Personally, I always thought that the 3 Series was so popular because of the snob factor, but there is some serious substance to this D-segment sedan. It is relatively quick, it is fun to drive, it is very well made, and it's even rather practical. BMW is quite stingy with its standard equipment though, something that is very true for most of its rivals. Forgive that though, and you will be more than happy with your purchase. It is an excellent car. Well done, BMW. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up as it makes a world of difference to my channel. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe and you will get notifications of upcoming reviews. I have loads more lined up for you guys, so stay tuned. If you own a 3 Series and you'd like to share your experiences, please use the comment section below. I would love to hear them. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Until next time, bye.